Ladies and gentlemen, preseason DFS is back on the menu, and I am absolutely pumped about it. My name is Chris Gimino, preseason DFS analyst here at rotorunners.com, and I'm going to review today the depth charts for the Hall of Fame game featuring the Dallas Cowboys and the Pittsburgh Steelers. The depth charts you can find here at rotorgrinders.com for free this week. I encourage you to come check them out. Now, this game historically does not feature a lot of the starters playing for any length of time. You will see a lot of backups. You will see a lot of the worst NFL football players in the league in this game. You're going to see a lot of that for the majority of the preseason, quite frankly, the way things will shake out this year. But Without further ado, let's break down who's actually going to play and for how long we expect them to do so. At quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger is not going to play. Mike Tomlin has already announced that Mason Rudolph will start the game. He may only play a quarter, possibly into the second quarter. Dwayne Haskins will finish out the first half. Now, Tomlin said he wants him out there for the two-minute drill. He may open the second half as well. That's what I originally expected. I'm sort of not really sure whether or not we're going to see an extended run for Joshua Dobbs, given that this is the Hall of Fame game. But Haskins is definitely the better player. He's been playing really well in camp. He'll be playing against subpar talent. And ultimately, between Haskins and Dobbs, even if Dobbs ends up playing longer, there's a good chance that Haskins could outscore him. Now, I do want you to keep in mind for your tournament play that Joshua Dobbs playing an entire half against scrubby Dallas Cowboys, even though he's not very good, could lead to some success for him. So definitely keep that in mind. Now, you want to talk about running backs, Najee Harris. Tomlin is getting people excited, saying he's going to prepare to play all four games. But keyword is prepare. We do not know exactly how much he will play. And in that exact quote, if you listen to the whole thing, he left the door open for Harris to actually not play at all in this game. Maybe they'll tease us with a couple of series here. But if you are looking for an extended period of time for Najee Harris, don't bank on it. They are banged up. For instance, Anthony McFarland was limited in practice with an ice pack wrapped around his left quadricep. That's not necessarily good for his availability here in this game. Benny Snell did not practice on 8-2 or 8-3. He's highly questionable based on that missed practice time so close to the game. Doesn't seem like they're saying too much about his injury, but it doesn't look like it's all that insignificant. Kalen Balage, Jalen Samuels, Trey Edmonds, Tony Brooks-James, Those are the guys you can expect to be available here in this game. Brooks James was just signed. That's not really a great sign for those guys I just mentioned, Harris, McFarland, or Snell. And you can throw Balazs in this mix because he's played so well at training camp that I do think that he might be sort of earning his way into playing with the starters in the future preseason games. So I don't think he'll play extended run. Just because he's the best player amongst the guys that are available, maybe you can expect him to be the top scorer here by like a fraction you know, if they played this game a thousand times because he's better than the other guys. But I think playing time wise, I wouldn't really expect him to play an extended amount. I think maybe Edmonds or Brooks James are the guys that stand to stay in the game the longest. Jalen Samuels was banged up earlier in camp. TJ Watt not going to play, so you can ignore him. Deontay Johnson, Juju Smith, and Claypool. These are guys that, again, they're starters. They haven't been explicitly ruled out to this point, but I would not expect them to play much, if at all. James Washington, he's a known commodity around here, but he hasn't been playing with you know, the top tiers of the offense in camp. So maybe he slides into some playing time that we didn't expect. I think that you can keep that on your radar for tournaments because I don't think he'll be exceptionally popular. Or, or quite frankly, maybe he is. I don't know. Uh, ownership a little bit harder to gauge here in these contests. And I don't, I'm not sure everyone's going to be on a guy like Tyler Simmons, who's a guy that caught my eye even before camp started, played at Georgia. Uh, he's a guy that they snagged off of a, a pro day that wasn't even his. And they were so impressed by what he was doing, helping out Georgia's pro day, that they signed him to a contract almost on the spot. Now, he's been impressing in camp. He's been playing special teams. That's something that's very good for your opportunity to impress coaches. And if you do that, you're going to have a good opportunity to play in a game like the Hall of Fame game. I expect him to play a lot. Don't exactly expect a lot for Ray Ray McLeod, who missed Tuesday's practice with an undisclosed uh, reason. I don't know if it was an injury, but that doesn't necessarily bode well for him since he's a guy they know a lot about and they probably won't want to run him into the ground in this game either. The rest of these guys, Cody White not practicing, and then you've got Sexton, McCoy, Bussey, and Johnson fighting for the rest of the snaps. I think Bussey 
and maybe Johnson are the guys that I'd be looking at if I was going to take someone aside from Simmons looking for a very lower owned dart throw. Uh, the tight ends, forget it, they're banged up. Ebron's, he's not playing. Uh, he's been banged up all camp. Freermuth left Tuesday's practice with a shoulder injury. Even without that, I was a little bit nervous about him not playing as much as people would expect or want simply because it's the Hall of Fame game and they're going to want to run him a little bit more later in the preseason. With the injury here, or at least what seems like it might be an injury, I'm not so sure that we want to take too much of a tight end in a showdown that might not play very much. Uh, same with Zach Gentry. He left Tuesday or he did not play practice on Tuesday with the left leg. Um, I'm not sure that he's actually injured. He could probably go here. I still have a projection for him, but that doesn't mean that we should get excited about him. And we certainly don't need to get excited about Kevin Rader and Marcus Ball, even if they play the entire game. Neither one of these guys is actually very uh, athletic, so you'd be, <laughs> you'd be asking for either a couple of touchdowns or, or, or I guess one touchdown will do the job in a showdown. But you'd also be asking for probably a little bit of luck to get those guys heavily involved in the offense. They're mostly blockers. Uh, Boswell and Sloman, these guys are going to split time at kicker. And if you want to spend your hard-earned money trying to figure out which one of these guys is going to make the field goals here in a very low-scoring game, be my guest. I don't think either one of them has a ton of upside. Going over to the Cowboys side on the depth charts, Dak Prescott's not going to play. He won't even be in Canton. Gilbert and Rush are probably going to play the majority of the first half. Maybe Rush gets into the second, but Danucci, uh, we saw him last year in the regular season stinking up the joint. You're going to see him do it yet again here in the Hall of Fame game for probably almost an entire half. So enjoy that particular jabroni sandwich. Now, Ezekiel Elliott, I don't expect him to play. Pollard, same deal. If he plays, it'll probably be limited. So I'm looking down at Dowdle, Knox, and Hardy to get the bulk of the run here on the Cowboys depth chart. Dowdle's the best player. He's a guy that I'm going to recommend that you at least take some shots at here. But the level of conviction is not amazing here with Knox and Hardy liable to play the majority of the snaps since they are the ones deepest down the chart and Dowdle actually has a chance uh, to have action in the regular season. Now, CeeDee Lamb, Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup. Of course, Cooper's not going to play because he's not going to be there. Gallup's been banged up, so I don't expect him to go. If he goes, it won't be for very long. And Lamb, the same deal. He's been crushing camp. Wide receiver one kind of performance here, really ascending to the top of the food chain here in Dallas. Uh, they're going to practice with the Rams on Saturday, so I expect anyone who's got a starter cal- caliber pedigree to get their work in there, let the scrubs and the jabrones play in the Hall of Fame game. Cedric Wilson and Noah Brown, they might actually be good enough to get some reps against the Rams too. So I'm looking at Simi Fajoko, uh, Osiris Mitchell. These are guys that I'm getting hyped up a little bit in camp. Um, you know, Malik Turner hasn't necessarily garnered too much hype, but I've been seeing that he's relatively high up their depth chart at the moment. Uh, not excited about Turner as much as I am for Hoko and Mitchell, the young players. I expect those guys to play a lot. They are deep here. You can see they have 14 guys at the wide receiver position, you know, minus Vasher, who's out, not going to play. Uh, still a lot of bodies here, so it's a little bit concerning if you're trying to take shots. But these are the two best guys if you're going to do it with Dallas wide receivers. Jarwin is not going to play in this game. He won't be in Canton. Dalton Schultz is basically a starter. I mean, he's, if he's not a starter, he's certainly going to be in the regular season mix for this team. So you're looking at Jeremy Sprinkle and Sean McKeon as two of the better pass-catching options on this team. The position is not particularly thick with Eubanks and Lynn, not really threats for tremendous production. I would expect one of these two guys to produce something here in this game. I wouldn't Call it an immaculate amount of fantasy points, but McKeon, comparable to Tanner Hudson on playerprofile.com, really gets the juices flowing. Hudson, of course, a preseason Hall of Famer. Zerline's not going to kick for the Cowboys. He's on pup. Hunter Niswander is actually a punter, but he's going to do the kicking here. I'm not really sure you can even roster him on DraftKings. I haven't checked if they added him, but if they did, certainly he's the kicker and the only one for the Cowboys. Over in lineup HQ, I've got a couple of picks uh, parsed out as part of my conviction plays for the slate. The Steelers and the Cowboys defenses are going to be two plays that you're going to want to target. Defense and special teams, especially good in preseason DFS contests. We saw a couple of years ago, the Ravens could not win the slate in the Hall of Fame game without having them. I think that the Steelers are going to be in a particularly similar situation going against three weak quarterbacks for the Cowboys. So there should be plenty of mistakes 
uh, on this particular night. So you're going to want to at least target them in the flex, and they are certainly a high possible candidate for your captain slot, even with the volatility of the defense special teams position. They're the highest raw projected play on the slate. There, now, there's not really that much else to get super excited about because of all the volatility and uncertainty that goes along with this game. However, if you're playing in tournaments, I've got three guys that I'm quite interested in. Rico Dado being the best of the three Cowboys running backs that I expect to be, see significant run. Uh, he's just the player that, even if he doesn't get as much run as the other two backs, I think that there's more potential for him uh, to get uh, some of the high, poten- you know, high DFS scoring situations, such as receptions, such as a touchdown, uh, as opposed to the other fellows that are going to play in this game for the Cowboys. Now, Tyler Simmons, he's someone that I talked about earlier. Definitely a very good potential to play a lot in this game. So they want to play some of the lower tier guys. I expect because of his special teams ability that they'll want to get him involved heavily in this game and also see what he can do on offense. And he may be playing a bunch with Haskins, who's just a better quarterback than anyone else in this game, surprisingly. So there's a guy that you might want to target for your tournaments. Now, Semi Fajoko, red zone guy. Someone who's got size and speed, could break a big play. Someone who I expect to play quite a bit, being a rookie, not necessarily being someone who's beyond reproach in terms of playing time. Maybe they hold him out for a couple of snaps more than some of the other younger guys because they want to see him against the Rams on Saturday. However, I do expect him to play enough to be viable in this format. Folks, that's going to do it here for this little preview of the Hall of Fame game. I encourage you heavily to come hang out with us for the rest of the preseason in Discord. Come check out the tools, check out the depth charts, check out the broadcast we're going to do for the biggest slates with Alex Dunlap. Uh, Come absolutely check out the lineup HQ optimizer. If you're going to build some lineups here, we are going to pack that puppy full of insight. And of course, I love the preseason. I hope you can hear it in my voice how passionate I am about these players. I love the worst players in the NFL. It really keeps me going here in the offseason. And I want you to come and check out everything that we're doing here at rotogrinders.com. Folks, that's going to do it. Let's go get it. Hey, thanks for checking out our videos. If you want more expert advice on DraftKings, FanDuel, or any other daily fantasy sports, make sure you check out the current videos playlist.